Hey, the Grand Alive! Welcome to Coffee with Will. I'm Will Bowman, and I am here today with Newt Bueller, who is the Republican candidate for the governor of Oregon, and he has graciously come into the studio today to chat with me a little bit about himself and a few of his politics, um, what he's doing running for governor of Oregon. So thank you so much, well, Nate, for coming in and chatting thanks. with me. I really appreciate you coming in here today. Sure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So now this show was brought to you by Grand Ron Hospital, Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Anything to Digital, EONI, and Les Schwab Tire Center. Those are our sponsors, and they're the reason we are able to bring you, be bringing you this show today. So, Newt, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come from being a native of Roseburg, Oregon, to being to running for the governor of Oregon now uh, today? Sure. Well, yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, my brothers and I were born and raised in, in Roseburg. We mm. were uh, three sons of a butcher and a homemaker, uh, oh. two people who didn't even graduate from from high school, so as you can imagine, they really stressed the importance of a high quality education, education for us. Yeah. Uh, I took them very seriously in, uh, with regards to that and went to the best university in the nation, uh, Oregon State University. <laughs> no offense, I, <laughs> no offense to EOU. Well, we're, we're second best. Yeah, I say best. We're okay. second best. Yeah. You're yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you that. <laughs> Uh, I played baseball there, uh, yeah. so I guess it's uh, safe to say the uh, the best baseball university mm. in the nation. There's no argument about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then from there, uh, medical school in Baltimore, where I met my wonderful wife Patty. And at graduation, we uh, I asked her two very important questions. Uh, the first, would you marry me? And the, the second, uh, would you move to Oregon and make Oregon uh, our home? And, oh, wow. And fortunately for me, she said uh, yes to both of those questions. Yeah. It took her a little longer to say yes to the first and the second. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and ever since, we've been uh, truly partners in everything we've done. And we've been in, in Bend in Central Oregon now for almost 25 years. Wow, very cool. So what, where was she from? Yeah, from Chicago. Oh. Yeah, so it was a little bit of a stretch to, yeah. you know, to, to come all the way from the Midwest to, to Oregon. But what? Now, did you guys move right to Bend? or uh, We spent five years in, in the Portland metro area. Uh, we, okay. we finished our medical school training and then, then to Bend. Uh, there we've been uh, really truly partners in everything we, we've done. You know, of course, raising a couple of kids, uh, uh, supporting each other's medical practices. My wife is an eye surgeon. Uh, we've certainly been partners in starting businesses together also. Uh -huh. Some that have done well, some not so well. <laughs> uh, we've been partners in being involved in the Central Oregon community, and now we're certainly partners in the, this run for governor. Very so. cool. So you, you know, medicine is something, obviously, that is an integral part of your sort of family sure. and, and your, and your um, uh, and now also, you know, maybe a little bit in your in your run for governor. Why did you decide you wanted to go into medicine? Like, why uh, you mentioned earlier yeah. that you were a uh, knee and foot, I believe, or a knee, knee and, and hip. Uh, knee and hip doctor. Yeah. What made you decide to go in that direction? How and maybe how does that relate to what you're trying to do today? Yeah, yeah, great question. Yeah. So a, a combination of, of things. Uh, uh, I really enjoy uh, helping people and solving their problems. I'm, sure. I'm very much focused at solving problems. And also on a personal level, uh, when I was 12 years of age, my uh, father had a, a, a big stroke, uh, a stroke so f severe that uh, he lost use of his left arm and mm. left leg. Uh, and I saw how uh, profoundly important his medical care was, and not just the, the doctors, but the nurses and the therapists and the mm. occupational therapist, and, and not only helping him recover, but also the whole family. And, uh, uh, and I really uh, wanted to be part of something like that, uh, combined with my, my love of, of math and, and science and, and overall problem solving. So it was really just a, a, a natural fit for me in so many ways. It's interesting to me that you know, recently we've had multiple doctors who have been running for the sort of conservative Republican, mm -hmm. the Republican um, uh, positions and governor. Yeah. Bud Pierce uh, is sure. a is a physician. You yeah. yourself, and yeah. so I'm wondering if there's something particularly um, particular about the medical profession that seems to allow people or be 
pulling at people to get involved with the political state right now. Yeah. I think most physicians uh, are about service, about true. helping other people, so it's consistent in, in, in that way. Uh, and also I think there is just a, a increasing desire for physicians to become involved as we see more and more public policy in, in government uh, uh, influence affecting medicine. And so we see how important it is not only for our profession and, and maybe even our businesses, but also our patients. You know, yeah. it, it's really a, a fundamental need of healthcare and uh, how important it is for people to have access to that kind of high quality medical care. And so there's a desire to bring all those things together. So you see people like Bud Pierce and myself running for, for elected office more often. I think it's a great thing. I, I think we need more uh, people who are problem solvers, you know, mm. people who are uh, more focused on, on helping people solve their problems than uh, just winning an argument. And I think when you're trained as a physician or a scientist, it's really about solving the problem. Uh, when you're trained, for example, more as a lawyer, it's, uh, it's more about winning the argument, <laughs> not necessarily solving the problem. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we need a, a more influence from people who are trained in the sciences and in medicine uh, to provide that balance in our, in our political system. Yeah, well, and even more so, you know, still like, you know, the uh, healthcare and medicine is becoming such a central part of the of the of the conversation of politics and those kinds yes. of things. So doctors are kind of right in the center of that. Yeah, in, in a big portion of our state budget, you know, yeah. over twenty percent of our state budget now is directly healthcare related spending. So when I'm looking to you know lead the state as governor, I have intimate knowledge of a big portion of the state budget, which is, is very helpful. And remember, we've had a former governor who was a physician uh, for many years, uh, uh, Dr. Governor Kitzhaber, who, mm -hmm. you know, who also had that kind of background. Very cool. So at, in kind of reading over some of, your, some of your statements and those kinds of things, one thing that I noticed was sort of a very high level of, uh, of pragmatism. And by pragmatism, I mean sort of being willing to take the best of all of the different parties and people yeah. that are all ultimately working for the betterment of Oregon mm -hmm. and working toward the shared best goals. I mean, you yourself, you yourself, um, you know, I'm not. I, I certainly wouldn't want to put you in a camp, but yeah. you know, you you some of your ideas are traditionally more um, founded in a left position. Some of your ideas are more founded yeah. in a right position. You know. What, how does that fit in with you as a person? So there's this, this impulse toward pragmatism and using yeah. all people's opinions um, to find the best goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we, we find the best solution to all problems when we take as many diverse opinions as possible and, and listen to learn from lots of different people and then construct the best solution set from that. And, mm -hmm. and I, I personally reject a lot of these narrow political labels that mm -hmm. increasingly divide us and um, and actually define less and less of us all the time. They just don't work. Uh, people are too complex. I'm certainly not a typical, uh, I don't fit any of those typical labels very well. And yeah. when I'm looking to solve problems, I don't want to come from a per certain perspective. Uh, I do similar to when I'm helping people in my medical practice. Um, mm. If you came to me, well, I wouldn't ask if you're a, a, a independent, uh, a Democrat or a Republican. I would sit down with you and tell me your problem, yeah. and I'd listen. I would gather all the data, get other people to help if necessary, and then roll up my sleeve and, and fix your problem. And that's the kind of approach I've taken in the legislature, and that's the kind of governor I'll be. I'll be an independent-minded governor for everyone in Oregon, no matter who you are or where you live who you happen to love or, or even how you're registered to vote. Mm. So it's kind of, you know, and, and I think that it's interesting because Jamie McLeod Skinner, who's been in here a couple of times um, to have the conversation, to have conversations similar to this, who's also from Central Oregon area, yeah. um, hold a very similar sort of ideology yeah. to, to yours in the way that she calls herself a, a rural Democrat and that she holds many of sort of the traditionally conservative values such as hard work, family, supporting the military, those kinds of things, yeah. yet she finds herself running for the progressive um, ticket. Do you think there's something yeah. special about Central Oregon that allows you to have one foot in sort of the eastern or uh, the rural, but at the same time the the western um, 
uh, more urban mindset? Yeah. I, I think Central Oregon is a little bit of a unique culture. It's very, uh, there's a lot of independent minded people and uh, you may not realize it, but the district I represent in the Oregon legislature uh, is the most democratic district held by a Republican in the entire state, uh, the state of Oregon. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. there is a, a lot of uh, interest in listening to, to people and really understanding them for their, who their individual uh, views are instead of hanging some artificial label on them. And, and uh, you know, that has uh, uh, been a great, uh, a growing experience for me representing that district. And my reputation, certainly in Central Oregon and, and increasingly even the legislature, as an independent-minded leader who, uh, who uh, has a thoughtful voice, a caring heart, and a, uh, and a, uh, and an open mind with regards to a lot of these problems. Sure. So now that kind of brings me into you know what might be more of the last question. And yeah, I ask almost all of the sort of politicians, especially the ones that come from outside of the Eastern Oregon area. This, you know, I think traditionally, you know, Eastern Oregon has been um, Eastern Oregon's feel, whether or not it's real or not, yeah. sort of left off of the plate by many of the the, the Western Oregon politicians. Sure. And we kind of, I think, a lot of people feel like an afterthought out yeah. here. And I read your eight points of bridging the urban and rural divide. Yeah. And it, so it sounds like bridging that gap is sort of something that is form and forefront on your mind. Yeah. How do you, if you're elected governor, um, how would you sort of actively, how would you actively pursue making sure that rural Oregon is as much of a consideration as yeah. maybe the western uh, side of uh, Oregon that's more um, geographically yeah. present. Yeah, well, look, well, this this uh, divide between urban and rural Oregon is, is artificial. It, there, it's not part of our fixed landscape. It's not a mountain or a lake. It's something that's been created by decades of policy and, and really a lack of leadership in bringing urban and rural Oregon together. And, and being someone from uh, rural Oregon, I grew up in, in Douglas County, I've seen the profound impact of that in, in our rural areas. And it's something that we have to close that gap for the good of all Oregon, for the good of not only uh, rural Oregon, but urban Oregon. The achievement and opportunity gap we see between those two Oregons uh, we should not tolerate as, as a state. And I'm focused, I'll be that leader for all of Oregon, uh, but particularly I'll be a voice and champion for rural Oregon, for many of those small communities that have been uh, left behind, that they've been forgotten, and they've struggled way too long with, uh, with unemployment, poverty, and addiction, which has caused mm -hmm. way too much pain and, and, and suffering. And I'm actually very optimistic about rural Oregon. Uh, I know that might not be the majority uh -huh. opinion, and I'm so optimistic about rural Oregon because the world needs a lot of the products that rural Oregon can provide. Uh, the world certainly needs high quality, safe food and there's nowhere anywhere in the world better able to provide it than our food industry, our ranchers, our, our fishermen, our, our farmers, or for that matter, our brewers and wine makers. <laughs> uh, and certainly the, the world needs uh, innovative new wood products and there's nowhere anywhere in the world better able to provide that than Oregon's mills and, and uh, mill workers. And I'd even say the world needs uh, uh, clean, renewable, uh, affordable energy. And yeah. again, there's nowhere better able to produce that than, than rural Oregon right now. So I'm actually very, very optimistic about rural Oregon. We just need a, a governor who cares about rural Oregon and a governor who will lead for all of Oregon. Very cool. And do you feel like, do you maybe feel like your, your upbringing, you know, growing up with parents who were blue collar kind of makes you a little bit more connected and sympathetic with rural Oregon? Well, certainly all those life experiences add to you know, what makes up a person. So sure. my growing up in, in Roseburg, uh, but I've you know, gone to college in Corvallis. I've yeah. lived for five years in, in, in Portland. I have lived now for 25 years in, in Bend. And I've also been involved in a lot of organizations uh, that service the whole, the whole state. Yeah. I've been uh, a director on the Ford Family Foundation. I've been on the OSU Foundation board, uh, uh, St. Charles Health System. So all those life experiences come together to prepare someone like me to do this job as, as Oregon's next governor. 
Very cool. Very cool. So it's it's, it's interesting because you've kind of been you've had a more rounded experience of Oregon than than some. You know, you've lived in the West, in the East. You've kind of, and now you live in the Central. So you've kind of gotten a, a full taste of the palate that is Oregon. Yeah, I, I certainly like to think that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I've spent uh, you know four years in the Oregon Legislature as a uh, as a state representative, having a real uh, front line uh, view of what's going on in the state, and I've been deeply disappointed with regards to the mismanagement of our state and mm -hmm. uh, the lack of leadership from the governor. Uh, and I'm really running for office for a very simple reason, to, to fix the big problems that have been avoided, ignored, and quite frankly, made a lot worse by Governor Brown over the last four years. Very cool, very cool. Well, I think we're running out of time. Okay. So thank you so yeah. much, Newt, for thanks coming for, in and chatting with me. me. Yeah. And uh, thank you, LeGrand Alive, yeah. for tuning in to Coffee with Will. Um, this show was brought to you by Grand Ron Hospital, Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Anything 2 Digital, EONI, and Les Schwab Tire Center. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you have people who you think would be interesting Coffee with Will guests, be sure to tag them or mention them in the comments, um, and we'll do our best to get them up here and on the show. I'm Will Bowman, and we'll see you next time on Coffee with Will.